Hi, I'm Tim Shatney, and in these few videos I want to show you how to create max MIDI effects. And today we will start from creating a transposition max MIDI effect. Later on we would modify it in the form of chord generator. So let's go to Ableton and start doing this thing. I have here prepared this MIDI clip. It works with this organ house preset from Ableton 11 and I send it through this echo audio effect. And basically on this MIDI clip we will test our max MIDI effect. So to create a template for building a MIDI effect, we just open max MIDI effect menu and double click on max MIDI effect. Now we go to edit mode here. And now we can see here that there are two new objects for us. The first one is MIDI in and the second is MIDI out. MIDI in receives MIDI data from Ableton and MIDI out sends MIDI data back to Ableton. And in this setup, this connection directly connects MIDI in with MIDI out, which means the MIDI data passes through without any changes. We could modify it and add here an object with help of which we can get a lot of different information about MIDI. So I just clean up space now and add this object which is called MIDI parse. It interprets raw MIDI data which we can get from MIDI in. And now from these eight outlets we can get a lot of different things. From the first we would get a list with pitch and velocity of note on and note off event. Then we would get a poly key pressure after it, control change, then program change, then follows aftertouch, pitch band, here we can see MIDI channel, and then the last one is MIDI event message. So a lot of things and with all of this you can imagine that you can build any kind of MIDI effect you want. And since we want to do first of all a transposition MIDI effect, we would take the output from this first outlet. And I would use the print object to see in Max console what we get when we play back our MIDI clip in Ableton. And for each this musical event, MIDI note, we get two events, two lists, which tell about note on and note off event. And in all of these lists, you can see we have two numbers. So the first number is the MIDI note, and the second one is the velocity of it. And on note off event, you will have always velocity, which is equal to zero. And on note on event, you will have this velocity, which is bigger than zero. So since we get here these lists, it means that we somehow need to separate contents of these lists in such a way that we can only change individually a MIDI note value. And that's what we can do with help of an object which is called unpack. It breaks a list into individual messages. And we want to break this list into, into two individual integer numbers. And so I create live num box like this and the second one like this. And I see that now we can have here and here separately MIDI node and velocity of it. Great, so now the simple thing. To create a transposition we just add an addition object and straight away add to the input 12. Which would mean that we transpose everything by an octave. Because it's like plus 12 semitones. And that's it. Now we need somehow to pack everything back into this raw MIDI data and send it back to MIDI out. And for that we can use another object which is kind of inverse of MIDI parse and it's called MIDI format. It says here it prepares data in the form of a MIDI message. That's what we want. And has also a lot of inputs. So MIDI parse has a lot of outputs and MIDI format has a lot of inputs. They are very similar to what MIDI parse has for outputs. So for example, the first input of MIDI format is a list for pitch and velocity for node on and node off 
And MIDI bars also have a first outlet, which is for note on and note off events, where we get pitch and velocity, and so on. They are really similar. And what we do now here, we just connect directly polykey pressure with polykey pressure, control change with control change input, program change output with program change input, and so on. We do it with all of these outlets, except of the last one, because this is a MIDI event message, that's not what we need here. And now, the last thing here is this first inlet, which should receive the list of pitch and velocity for not on and not off. And that's what we need to do here now. So since we unpacked this list, which gave us a note and velocity of not on or not off event, we need somehow to pack it back after our modification. And for that, there's an object which is called pack, create a list. And we need a list from two integers. This and this. And then if I now disconnect this print and connect to this pack, and also connect pack to the first inlet of MIDI format, then when I play back this MIDI clip, we can see in the console that we get this note on, note off events with modified pitch transposed by an octave. And now I disconnect this cable and connect to the first outlet of MIDI format. And you hear already now that it's all transposed by an octave. So we did it. Let's save it. Let's turn it off here. Great, it works. So let's modify it now and add some control that we can change the transposition in real time. I create the live dial, go to prototypes and pick transp. And this one would give for us values between minus 12 and 12. And uh, basically I also can create print object and track in console which values it gives for us. So yeah, from minus 12 to 12 and we connect simply this live dial to the plus object and oh, we are ready to go. Minus 12, octave lower. Minus 7, 0, perfect. The only problem which we have right now is that if I change the transposition while the note is held, we would get an infinitely held note. So let's try doing this actually. I change now transposition on the hold note. And now it's held forever. And we can do nothing now. So only maybe stop the playback then all those notes not held anymore. But you could see that it's a problem and somehow we need to solve it. So to solve this problem we would need actually to use few new objects. The first one is an object which is called i and it stores an integer value and outputs it later when we send the bank to its hot inlet. So to the cold inlet we connect our transposition control and uh, let's create classic actually number box from Ableton because it's good it shows negative numbers in comparison to live numbox which we need to modify to do it. So I create this one. You can also create it simply by pressing on I on your keyboard. And then when I change this transposition, you can see we have no output values here. But when I connect a button to the first inlet and send a bank with it, then it sends the last saved value here from the cold inlet. So that's first what we want. Now we need to bank this I object in such a way that we get a new transposition value only on note on event. How we do it? We could use a special 
object which compares the input value with, for example, initial comparison value, which we can write as an argument. And let's say if the input value is bigger than zero, then we would get one, otherwise we would get zero. And let's see if it works. Yeah, it works. So we could say that when we have this not on event, we have one here, otherwise it's zero. And now we could use an object which is called select or simply cell. And we can select one here. And this object would give, a, would give us a bang from the first outlet once we have this one in the input. And that's exactly when we want to change our transposition value. So we would send this actually here. We can delete all of these things. We can change it. You see, it changed on the output only on the next node on event. And this already value we could send in the plus object. You see, I changed transposition, no problem appears. So it's great. Now we fixed our problem and our transposition MIDI effect works stably. And that's it. That's what we did now. And let's try to modify now this MIDI effect and create from it a chord generator. So first of all, what we could do is actually here, when we do this unpack, not only connect these things like that with modification, but also connect all that stuff directly. So the node value connect directly from unpack to pack. And what it produced now then for us is that we would have an interval Because we actually now we could see here that we actually send two lists for note on and note off, which contain two different MIDI notes. Great. And if you want to have now from this algorithm a chord, you would simply need to add few instances of this algorithm of transposition and uh, to make things tidy I want to show you one thing which is called encapsulation to create this kind of thing which is called encapsulation we need to pick all the objects which we want so to say to hide and then go to edit and encapsulate or shift command E. And now it's like a patch inside a patch, which we could name transpose. Transpose. And if we double click on this P transpose object, then we would see, of course, double click in locked patcher, then we would see this patch which we now encapsulated here so we have now a patch inside a patch and why it's good because we can see that now our code looks much more tidy and we simply now could copy it for example three times and just connect it in the same manner one two three and then like that like that so now let's save it and see if it works so let's transpose by three semitones then by seven semitones and by ten let's hear if it works yes it works let's maybe make it a little shorter to make it more funky that's it we did it congratulations and now we could just simply add a drum set
and you can create music now with your MIDI effect. That was it for today. Thank you for watching and we'll see us in the next video. Bye bye.